one thing I always tell people is that sometimes some of the best practices you look for right there, you know, with networking and speaking and then talking to folks. So, did anybody say anything to you that was interesting? Anybody, you know, yes, yeah, so what was said to you? Yes. Um, a gentleman I just spoke to told me. What's his name? Paperwork and uh, he let them talk and open up about themselves. Yeah. And then he schedules another appointment where they get down to the paperwork. Let's give a man a hand clap. That's what I'm talking about. What else? When you when you're in this industry in particular, I'm sure I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you work with the youth, correct? Put your hands up, put your hand up in the air like you just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's good to talk to people and share ideas and best practices. What are you doing? What What are you doing? Because a lot of times we can get in our own world and it's just about what we're doing. And if it's not effective, then we like, man, you know, why is this not working? And somebody right down the street or a phone call away can say, you know, we'll try X, Y, Z. And that seems to really work uh, well. A friend of mine, I would, I would love to say that I, I, I'm the one that came up with this quote, but I didn't. His name is Dr. Anthony Muhammad. And he came up with this quote, and he says, you know, ideas are seeds, however, the culture is the soil. And that's a powerful quote, because what he's trying to say is, and I agree with him, like even here, you can get all these ideas and all these best practices, but the question becomes, is the soil ready for it? You know what I mean? And the soil is not the clients, it's the staff. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so that's, that's something folks don't want to look at. It's like, you need to look at the client and say, you need to work on your soft skills. But then if the client look at you and say, you need to work on yours too. <laughs> like, what are you talking to? <laughs> no, no, we got to work on this, you know? Because we're the greatest examples, in particular to these youth clients that are walking through our door. All the time, what you see in the day, its foundations took place in the 70s when my mom was in that workforce development program. So we're going to do this tomorrow. If you're here tomorrow, you're going to hear the same story. I just wanted to give you a little you know, feel for what we're talking about. But I want everybody to stand up. I know it's a lot of people. And I want you to find three or four people, give them a, not in your area, go around and meet somebody, give them a double high five and say, you are a generational transformation expert. Baby. Come on, tell me that. <laughs> and I would say to myself, but that don't make sense to me. Because it's, if the person hasn't changed internally, <laughs> does all that training make sense to them? Like, does, does the training on computer skills or home health aid gonna make sense to me if I still got a lot of stuff that's gonna slow me down from even taking that seriously? So what we did is we started focusing on soft skills way before it was popular. You know, back then, I, yeah, a few people talking about it, but we've been, I've been talking about stuff for 20-something years. I said, this, this, these are the skills. So we said, we need to focus on the internal and get people to change from the inside out. And then when we train them in all these other skill sets, then guess what? It makes sense to them. Then. What's the yeah. our, our model? So our, some of our basic beliefs were simply this. The job training is meaningless if the participant does not create a new paradigm about work. That may sound weird, but it's the truth. You know, people need to understand work, work only makes sense when it makes sense to you. You, you know what I mean? What you're doing. It don't, it don't make sense. Here's something that's really interesting. At birth, our participants did not say they wanted to be where they are. I don't know any baby that comes out to you know, their mom and says, oh, I can't wait to go into poverty. <laughs> you know, or I can't wait to drop out of school. You know, life takes them there. You know what I mean? Life takes them there. I'm trying to still convince Bill Gates he should be my dad. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't be, man. Just adopt me so I can get your babies when you leave. All right. And it does. I always believe this. Education and work changes everything. If a person can embrace those two, like when I work with the youth, I try to get them off that cloud that they're living on. You know, like, uh, I'm going to be going to MBA. I'm going to be this. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I said, do you know that there's 200 million people in the workplace and only 400 MBA jobs? <laughs> they're like, really? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or entertainer. I said, you know, less than 0.1% of the population makes it in the entertainment field. So they have, these, they, they have these bigger picture type stuff because that's what they see. But they don't realize that you can live a good life through work and have a good opportunity. But if you present it in a certain way, in particular for you, they'll, they'll embrace it. 